This video shows an auditor undertaking an ITF16949 remote audit at a certified client focused on the supplier management process. Watch this video and see whether you think the auditing technique applied by the auditor is effective. Good morning. Uh, could you please introduce yourselves? Yes, hello. I'm Harry, the supply chain manager. I am the process owner of the supplier management process. Hi, I'm James. Uh, I'm a supplier auditor, uh, both IATF and VDA 6.3 qualified. Hi there, my name's Jean. I'm the quality manager. Hi, thanks for joining this remote audit. Um, so from what I've learned so far, the last nine months have been an exceedingly difficult time with the COVID-19 disruption. Yes, yes, um, particularly challenging. Uh, not only for us, but for our supply base too. We've had two suppliers go out of business um, and, and we know of others that are having serious financial issues. Right, so can you explain how you've managed the risks uh, related to this situation? Well, as soon as COVID disruption started, we instigated a committee to look at the risks in the supply chain. Uh, we did a risk assessment of each of the production suppliers um, and uh, categorised high, medium and low risk. So for the high risk, we uh, definitely increased our contingency stock yeah, uh, and set up monthly calls with each supplier to, to, to monitor the situation. Uh, when it became apparent that the two suppliers were experiencing uh, really serious financial difficulty, uh, we then um, started the process to identify two new suppliers. Okay, so I'll look at the risk analysis process shortly. Um, firstly, could you show me the details of those two suppliers and explain the approval process? Yeah, I, I, I will let James explain that. Uh, so... James again, I did do the research and we found two suppliers. Uh, one was Talent Incorporated and the other one was Brackett and Sons Limited. Uh, Talent had a valid ISO 9001 approval, but Brackett and Sons did not have any approval. So I undertook the remote audit and they demonstrated that they had an effective implemented management system, which meets our requirements. Uh, based on this, we sought and got customer approval to use the supplier. Uh, for both suppliers, we also did a detailed risk analysis to verify the financial stability. Okay, um, I'll review the certificate, your audit report and customer approval shortly. So could you get those ready for me, please? I will also need to see the risk analysis that you undertook. Yeah, no problem. As Part of the planning, I reviewed the supply delivery and quality performance and despite the disruption that you have uh, still met both targets. Uh, I'll record this as a strength within the report. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that. Um, the process of risk assessment that we developed certainly helped to ensure we had no supplier or customer disruptions. Okay. Can I review the information related to the two new suppliers, please, James? One of the key things to cover on any remote audit is how is the organization managing risk, in particular risk caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the key potential risks is supplier disruption caused, for example, by a supplier financial problems. In this audit, the auditor focused on the areas of the highest risk and audited how two new suppliers had been selected. It was also evident that the auditor had reviewed the performance data in advance of the audit and had noted that the supplier delivery and quality performance had met the targets. The IETF CARA report gives the auditor the opportunity to record positive findings. This can be included also in internal and second party audit reports. During the audit, although the auditor stated 
that they would follow up on evidence later, there was no real evidence during the audit that any documentation was reviewed. Even though this audit was done remotely, the following should be applied. Remote audits should focus on the areas of the highest risk identified in the audit planning. Risks in the supply chain pose significant risk to meeting customer requirements and should be covered in any audit. In undertaking remote audits, audit trails should be followed, giving the auditees time to retrieve the data. And finally, in undertaking a remote audit, it should always be ensured that evidence of compliance and non-compliance is documented, including review of the organization's relevant quality management system documentation. <music>